if they will please mute their phones. As I indicated just before reading scripture to you, that we're coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses verses 4 through verses 4 through 7. And I like to share with people that I believe this is definitely the love chapter. And in there, we learn not only about love, but we also learn what love is. And we also learn what love does. So uh, there should be no talk of love anywhere in the Bible without covering God's love for each of us. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. For many of us, this is the first song we learned in children's church. And you may ask the question, why do you suppose they introduced us to a song like, yes, this confirmation, yes, Jesus loves me. I believe that the reason we were introduced to it so long, so early in life is because this is the love that has led to a path of eternal life. Eternal life. In order to receive it, I perceive it as love being a required characteristic because we can get confused with the secular world because the secular world has constructed an idea of love that is moving further and further away from true love that is found only in God. Amen? As with many things, godless people attempt to construct a false imitation of that reality. But we're believers, and we know that God is love, and love does what love is what love does. When it comes to love, humanity's version is but a pale shadow compared to the version, the version is, when it comes to love, humanity's version is but a pale shadow compared to the truth of God's love. And the Apostle Paul wrote a passage here in 1 Corinthians 13 that contains a concise picture of true love, and that is God's love. So let's take a look at this picture. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 4 through 7, gives us a beautiful tapestry of this kind of love. And if we look at our verse, uh, starting with verse 4, it declares that love is patient and kind. True patience is the state of being able to endure displeasure for a long time and respond to it with kindness. You see, the conjunction and combines those two words, patient and kind. And I'm going to give you an example here of, of, of kindness, acts of kindness that I've witnessed. And one is being in the grocery store and having to wait forever because you're, you've gone to the line that says 10 items or less. But two or three people ahead of you will have far more than that. And you're standing back, patting your feet, and going, oh, I can't wait till they get through this line. But somewhere between your thoughts and being impatient, God will move on your heart where you end up not only becoming more patient, but you will also end up paying for the person ahead of you, paying for their groceries. And another example I would like to share with you, because many of you guys know that I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm forever dealing and having to go and attend various events. But what about when one is all dressed up in their finest, already running late, and you guys know me, all, all, already running late, but as they're on their way to this event, they happen to look and see that someone is having car trouble. Well, instead of continuing on, that individual practices patience and an act of kindness by stopping in spite of what it is they have to do, and they help that individual. And I like to say that love is what love does, and acts of kindness is truly a characteristic of showing love. Love is not envy. So when the Bible says that love is not envy, 
What it really means is that when you possess true love, you will not be unhappy. You will not be unhappy about the accomplishments of others. You don't complain about it or wish to diminish or detract from the attainment of advantages of, of another. Love did, delights in the welfare of others and rejoice with them in the favor that they, that they enjoy. And, you know, and I know that you understand what that means. If you made a major accomplishment or something like that, or, or, or even one of the greatest joys that I get is when I witness a person receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That thing goes all over me. And I like to share with them the space that they have entered into and the privileges that they have with the decision that they made to join uh, other Christians in believing that Jesus Christ is Lord. Love does not boast. And perhaps the most obvious explanation of the idea that love does not boast is the understanding that those who truly reflect biblical love do not think themselves too high, think of themselves more highly uh, than others. They do not have an inflated sense of importance or consider themselves to be superior to others. I know some of you know exactly what I mean. And that is, you know, that is not the type of, of, of behavior that God would have the people who represent him and say that I am a Christian and I love the Lord, but yet I want to show to you that because I have Jesus Christ, I'm better than you. No, that is not the case, and that is not how we as Christians are to live. Or if, if you get a new car, you can't wait to tell people about that car and that your car is better than the one the next person uh, could be driving. That is boasting. Even as parents and grandparents, we have to be careful about sharing with people um, how our children and grandchildren are moving forward in life because for non-believers and some believers, they would perceive that as an indication that we're bragging and that we think our children are better than the next ones. But no, as a Christian, those are things that we are supposed to do, and we're to be happy and encouraging and letting them know that that was a but God moment. Amen? Because love is what love does. And I am grateful tonight to share with you that I understand the full concept of what God's love is. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love is not arrogant. And to be puffed up like bellows are full, full of air, the word means to be conceited and desirous of the praise from men. You've heard people say, you know, those bougie people over at St. Peter or those people who uh, sit up front. They always got to be up front because they're just so conceited. No, that's not what God would have us demonstrate as godly men and women. He wants us to display humility, encouragement, inspiring others, and not to put ourselves before them. And this is so important that Paul actually uses this word six times, six times in this letter. It is their pride. They chose a favor. And he was talking about the, some of the people of, the, of, Corinth, of Corinth, how they, uh, because of their pride, they chose favorite leaders against another. They were puffed up with knowledge, proud of their gifts. Their arrogance allowed a man committing serious sexual sin to carry on in their midst. They even acted arrogantly by taunting the authority of the Apostle Paul. To be full of oneself is to diminish the importance of others. Let me repeat that. To be full of oneself is to diminish the importance of others. And really what that is saying is so many people, regardless to what your status of life, they believe that in order to make themselves shine better or appear to be greater, it's at the expense 
of diminishing someone else by identifying what they perceive as flaws of that individual. Well, you know, Sister Deborah lives um, over at Guilford Forest. But Sister Deaconess and Deacon, De, Sister Deaconess uh, Thomas and Deacon Thomas, well, they just live in Gwinnett. That is an example of making, building yourself up to be more important than others, when really it should be the other way around. Our actions, our lifestyle, our beliefs, and the love that we show for others should speak whatever volume it is that we want people to know about us without having to boast about it and always telling other people about it. And to be full of oneself, as I indicated, um, is diminishing others. And we don't want to do that. We hear that a lot with our children. I tell you, that boy is so bad. And if this is my child or if that child was more like someone else's child, we probably we wouldn't have this problem. So now you're discouraging the child, you're hurting the child, and so forth. Um, love is not rude. Love is not rude. To behave improperly or unseemly, to act in defiance of social and moral standards resulting in disgrace, embarrassment, and shame. The Corinthian women were acting shamefully by blurring the distinction between the sexes, whereby they dishonored the authority of their husband. Discussing, it should have been, discussing or challenging things at church when it should have been discussed at home privately with their husbands. Others were, others who were well off, excuse me one second, um, and you've heard the saying, Women should be quiet in the church. You've heard them say women should not preach, be preachers. It's because of the misunderstanding of this statement in this scripture where it says that, you know, they were talking about things in church and challenging things that they really should have handled at home. That's what that passage is talking about. And others who were well off were behaving shamefully towards those who had little. You know, God has truly, truly blessed me. He's blessed many people that I know. But one thing I always say to the Lord is when it comes to a point where I began to brag about, when I began to show pride of what I have, then I ask you to remove it all from me. Because I would rather stay in the good grace of God than to have any of the earthly possessions that he has allowed me to have, because none of them can get me to the kingdom of God, and that's what I live for. Also, Christian's love, Christian love cares too much for the rest of the Christian community to behave in such unseemly ways. How do you think people would receive you, Deborah, if you are always talking about things other than things of the Lord? That is not showing an example of love, what love is, because love is what love does. Amen? Love is not arrogant. And I know many of you know these arrogant people. Of course, we don't have any at St. Peter. We don't have people within our family who are displaying symptoms of arrogance. But uh, arrogance, rather, it humbles itself to the light of the glorious of Christ. Love is not rude. Love is patient. It does not behave in ways that diminishes the importance of others in the Christian community. It rather gives itself to the concerns of others in a Christ-like manner. Let us take a moment, just for a moment, to reflect on these things that I've just shared with you in a moment of silence. And if you possess any of these things that is not Christ-like, Take this moment to go before the Lord and ask him to forgive you for that sin. Amen. And love does not insist on its own way. Now, I'm accused often in my family that is Mary Parker's way and Mary Parker's way only. 
But the one thing that I always make sure of is what do they mean by that? And once they explain it to me, I'm okay because I'm not that person who's seeking the attributes and characteristics to only look like what's going on. But I want it to, I want to be like, I want to be what it is that I'm doing and what I'm talking about. And certainly insisting on having my own way in the wrong way is not the way. It can also be very, very discouraging for others to perceive us as being self-centered and, you know, just always wanting it our way and not compromising and allowing others to have their way or to allow others to allow their light to shine because we're the ones that's always got to be up front. We've always got to be the one seen and we've always got to be the one heard. So that is not the characteristics that God would have us do. And also this type of person forces others to adjust themselves and use the art of persuasion to convince them that their way is right, which is one of the reasons that we are to study God's word, that we may show ourselves approved and able to rightly divide it. Otherwise, we can go through life believing what the preacher said and never knowing the truth for ourselves, uh, and that would be through an art of persuasion. Someone who seeks his own way loves personal gratification because their way is the only way. Do you know anyone like that? I'm sure if you thought about it for a few moments, you may be able to come up with one or two. You could say that this attribute is a summary of seeking to have your own way. That is a summary of the other characteristics that we've covered this evening. Amen? Because one thing I want you to leave with here this evening is that love is what love does. And I would like to also give you a biblical example of, a, of insisting of, of, on your own, having your own way. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12, Paul writes, So with yourself, since you are eager for manifestation of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. We are never to come to church, join a church, or serve in a church to expand our own kingdom. We're to come together to build God's kingdom. Amen? And that's what, you know, he's talking about here. We, um, we aren't to commit ourselves to getting our name out there, rather to get the name of Jesus Christ out there. Our way is not to be our agenda. We come in with a list of all the things that we want to happen, dates when they should happen, and if they don't happen, then we will exit. So love doesn't seek its own way, but rather it seeks the way of others and the way of the Lord. Amen? Another example would be someone who does not seek their own way. To locate a positive example of this, I want to, I want to encourage you to look at Corinthians chapter 9. And that's where Paul was explaining the right of pastoral compensation. And we all know that when it comes to the pastor's care, when you began talking about compensating him, that is where many of us will disagree. And, uh, and Paul further states that the privilege to give to those who labor among you in ministry. But Paul also knew that there were times and circumstances where that there might be a burden on the church in order to compensate the pastor. So we can help alleviate that burden and uh, by being faithful with our tithes and with our offerings and other resources and being there to serve in a capacity that would relieve pastor of some of those duties. So he said, what then is my reward? That in my preaching, I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Paul didn't seek his own way. He didn't demand a paycheck 
or a form of compensation. The gospel in the lives of Corinthians was the only way he wanted to seek. He was more concerned about the people and their behaviors in the in Corinth. And then Jesus. Jesus said, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom. Matthew 20 and 28. Jesus came to not seek his own way, but the way of God and the benefit of us. Because love does. Because love is not, because love does not seek its own way. Love is not irritable or resentful. I know many of you, like myself, have heard the term, sticks and stones may break my bones. But names will never hurt me. And sometimes when people have said that, it was so bitter and so painful that it even pricked your heart to hear them say that. And you've probably heard people say, I will never forgive them for what they did for me for what they did to me. Well, my brothers and my sisters, if we want to be forgiven, we must also forgive because the Bible tells us that forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. So that begrudgingly person who says, I will never forgive them for what they did, They do not realize that they have committed themselves to death because the wages of sin, we know what the wages of sin is, and that is death. And it is sinful to not forgive. So I seek you, my brothers and my sisters, that if there's anything that you're holding against anyone because of what they said, the way they treated you, or how they acted, I come to you this evening asking that you seek God and that you will forgive them as you want your Heavenly Father to forgive you. Amen? And then the greatest example of love uh, is Jesus. We see a beautiful description of love in in, uh, 1 Peter 2.19. Peter has been writing of the Christian's reactions to suffering, which may come on us unjustly. He would be so easy to react with bitterness and resentment and to feel justified for doing so. For the Christian, the example of patient suffering is Jesus himself. What was the reaction of Jesus to his experience? He was subjected to prejudice of the most extreme and petty kind. The judge at the trial even acknowledged the innocence of of the crime. But Pilate weakly gave in to the crowd's insistence that he be given the death penalty. He tried to declare himself innocent of Jesus' blood, but yet it had to be the Roman soldiers who put him to death. And in all the circumstances, why did those soldiers have to tease and torment him as they did? How was Jesus in the midst of all of this? We have to think about it. He was calm and he was serene because love is what love does. He didn't get irritated or blow his top. Can you just imagine seeing him right now on the cross? See him with the taunting crowd gathered to see the specular spectacle? But instead, he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Mm. The remarkable and supreme example, love is not irritable or resentful. Can't you just see him there hanging on that cross, not only the victim of injustice, but undergoing the most cruel form of capital punishment ever devised? Suffering intense pain, he takes time out of death 
and he says to the repentant criminal dying alongside him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. And he also looks out over the crowd and he sees his mother near the cross and the beloved John were close by. And he said, dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, he said, here is your mother. Have you got that extraordinary quality of love that no matter what, you're still going to seek an opportunity to show God's love within you? That's breathtaking, isn't it? It really, really is. Because we don't have the resources. We don't have the strength. We don't have that kind of love by ourselves. But, of, but of course, most of us aren't called on to undergo that degree of suffering. But this only highlights all the more our all too easily irritability and resentment. And I see that we are almost out of time here tonight. I was really, really about to get cranked up because that's what God's word does for me. And especially when we talk about love. And, you know, one of that final example I want to give you, and that is in the uh, scripture that talks about give and it shall be given to you, shaken together, pressed down. Too many times people only receive that message, receive that word as saying, ooh, money on the way, money on the way. That is not the only way that God gives us what it is he knows that we need. So my brothers and my sisters, as I close tonight, I want to close with one scripture that is very, very um, near to us, and that really sums up everything that I've just said. And that, that scripture is found in Romans 37, 39. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors to through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we're so thankful for your word today, Lord God. We are so faithful, and we're so thankful, God, that you love us, that you loved us so much that you gave us your only begotten son who died for us at all costs to please you and to fulfill the purpose for which you set down. And because of that, God, we are forgiven of our sins, Lord God, and we thank you, God, that we can say today that God loves me, and we thank you. We thank you for that love, Father God. So those who've heard your word here tonight in this expectation moment, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord that they will evaluate themselves, that they will seek you, Father, and ask that you will reveal anything within their heart, any unforgiveness, any any acts and behaviors, Father, that have not been an exemplification of who you are, Father God. And, Lord, as we go as we go our separate ways tonight, Lord God, let us be reminded that love is what love does. Love is patience. Love is, love is, is not being puffed up. Love, God, is representation of you. And for that, God, we are most thankful. I ask that you will bless every household that is represented here tonight on the phone line as well as the Zoom line. And, God, I thank you for filling me up with your spirit on this day. And I bless your holy name, for you are worthy. You are worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. We ask that you will continue to protect those who are traveling, those who may have any type of illness that they're recovering from, Father God. We especially lift up uh, uh, Sister Addie Clayton, uh, Mother Mother um, Mother Spears, Pastor Thomas, all those who have received their COVID test. God, we thank you for their well, well-being right now, Lord God. We know, God, that you're everywhere at the same time. So, God, we ask that your will be done, and we just ask that you will stop by tonight and check on each person 
because you know the need that they have. We thank you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I bless you in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Have a blast with watch your surroundings. Be vigilant. Watch your surroundings. Thank you, Melissa Parker. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God bless you, Lord. Teacher. Thank you. Have a blessed night. Have yeah, a blessed yeah. night. Yeah. Every, each and every one. All right. Yeah. Have a blessed night. Yeah. 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 I thank you for blessing the Lord. Amen. I thank you for loving the Lord. And I bless God that we love each other. Amen. 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 Amen.